From 1467 to 1590, known as the period of warring states, Japan was ravaged by war as local lords battled amongst themselves for territory and influence. It's the era that made samurai into legends, immortalized in the films of Kurosawa Akira. The end of the period was dominated by three great warlords. The first, Oda Nobunaga, began the great task of uniting the country. When he was assassinated, power passed to his retainer, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Hideyoshi continued Nobunaga's work, but when he died, the ambitious general Tokugawa Ieyasu seized power. While many of Hideyoshi's former allies gave Ieyasu their support, others, like the samurai and bureaucrat Ishida Mitsunari, remained loyal to Hideyoshi's family. And just like that, the country was split in two. On October 21st, 1600, the two sides met here at Sekigahara, the crossroads at the heart of Japan in what is today Gifu Prefecture. From the east came the Tokugawa army, led by Ieyasu himself. The western army, under Ishida Mitsunari, had already taken their positions here, on Mount Sasao. As the battle began, it was the western army that seemed stronger, but there was already trouble brewing in the ranks. More a politician than a warrior, Mitsunari had never quite earned the respect of his allies. As fighting began, some of his orders were ignored at crucial moments, leaving him unable to control the army. And then there was Ieyasu's secret weapon, a storm of letters offering each of the Western allies land and titles in return for switching sides. As the fighting grew more and more intense, several of the commanders turned on their own side, and the Western army collapsed in a devastating chain reaction. The battle would prove one of the most decisive in Japanese history, effectively bringing the period of warring states to a close. The Tokugawa dynasty would rule Japan unopposed for 260 years. As the battle that determined the future of Japan, Sekigahara continues to have great symbolic power and forms a dividing line between the East and West. With many subtle cultural differences, things like dialect, cuisine, even the side of the escalator people stand on, persisting to this day.